Hello, everybody. Welcome, welcome. Uh, my name is Mark Shinesk. I'm Senior Application Engineer with Siler Design Solutions. And in this uh, webinar today, we're going to do uh, an introduction to Geosync Go, Z Tools and Cloud Publisher. Now, we all know that we can get an abundance of point cloud data, and I'm not showing my screen. There we go. Hey, and everybody can see. Uh, we all know that we have an abundance of point cloud data sources that we can get. We can get it from aerial drones, mobile mapping, ground scanning, handheld scanning, even online GIS sources. Um, the challenges become, what do we do with this data? So we have uh, the data size and the quantity of data. You know, we, we're scanning all this data. We're, we're trying to keep it uh, on our hard drives or on our servers, and we're trying to find this data. The technical knowledge and skill of the operators. You know, who has access to all this scan data? Do they have the skills and ability to glean out the data and information they need from the scan data? Um, how do we view it? How do we share it? How do we get this data out to others who may not need a full-on uh, engineering uh, set of plans or 3D models. Maybe uh, we have the ability just to give this to people to take measurements or viewing or uh, just getting some cursory information off of it. And how do we integrate this with other programs? And so we have this solution called Geosync Go. Now, Geosync Go is developed by uh, a team that has put together a set of tools uh, that lets us acquire publicly available data. It lets us organize all of our point cloud data, access and extract that data and create subsets of that data. So, you know, if I have large area scans and I only need a portion of it, uh, we can use these tools to extract that data out. Um, also, colorize, reproject, geo reference and translate the data, clip, merge, and export out to others, publish, view, and share. And so the Geosync Go consists of two types of uh, tools here. One is called the uh, Z Tools. The Geosync Z Tools is a standalone tool for performing most of your data functions on point cloud data, including um, acquisition of data from public sources, colorizing LIDAR, processing DXF or shapefile data, uh, publishing these, filtering the data out, uh, reprojecting, simple uh, XML to CSV and image to tiling, so creating tile data. And then we have another tool uh, that also lets us publish these for local consumption within our companies um, on local hard drives or even publishing to a USB drive. You can publish your point cloud in a viewer to USB to share around. The other tool that we'll be showing will be the cloud publisher. The cloud publisher lets you uh, organize and publish these uh, these point cloud uh, data sets into uh, viewable, uh, uh, shareable items on a, any web browser. Um, you can share these links out. Um, you can also uh, uh, password protect them, limit the amount of people that can see them, or make them publicly available. Okay, it supports 360 photos, data files, and hyperlinks as well. All right, I'm going to. Get out of the PowerPoint here. I'm going to give you a quick demonstration of, of some of the tools here. Um, close some of these down. Uh, so let me go ahead and start the Z tools. So uh, we have the Z tools pack. Now I, I kind of keep these down uh, because of the uh, uh, the amount of uh, processing power that it gives here. So this is the standard Z tools uh, interface. Um, it is a standalone. Um, um, interface here, and it lets you divide your uh, data up into several projects. So the standard interface are your tools are on here on the left side, um, and on the right side are the um, dialog boxes for performing functions. Um, so I have several projects here um, available to me. Uh, you can create new projects at any time. And what the project creation does is let you, it, it organizes your data into a series of files and folders on your hard drive. Um, so I'm gonna be dealing with a project here called St. Joe's Academy. Um, from the project, you can set your paths, where the project's gonna be, where your root folders are going to be, um, the source data, 
and uh, where we're going to do the, the cloud compare, the external viewing. Um, I can see my files, the different tools I have available to me on the left side. I can limit what I want to see by checking items on it. And as I do, um, it just takes that tool out of my list. Um, I have some map projections. So when I'm adding point cloud data into Z tools, um, I'm going to need to specify what projection that data is in. Things that I gather from the USGS are going to typically be in UTM. So I'm going to have to make sure I have my list of projections. Now, I don't have a complete list of projections here. Um, I can add them at any time. I can go to my settings list. These are the, the current ones that I have loaded into my system because they're the ones I use commonly. Um, if I need to add any more, I can just search and add coordinate systems to my list as needed. So there's no need to have you know, your hundreds and hundreds of of projections that you have to go through. You can limit what you see here to just the common ones that, that, that are beneficial to you. Okay. Um, the next thing I'm gonna do here is go to what's called the Z Tools map. So um, I can go out here and get publicly available data. Um, it's going to use the uh, OpenStreetMaps source as my background imagery as those tiles load here. Um, it's taking a little bit because I have a lot of uh, online things going on right now. Um, but once you when you get your map set up, what you can do is you can set some polyline information up. Um, so I know I'm, I'm working in a particular area um, and um, I'm going to be able to uh, choose the, the data that I want. Okay. So what I can do here is uh, while it's loading, I can do this while it's in the middle of loading. Let's say I wanted to get some data for this Principia school area. Um, I can draw a polygon and I can save that poly out, okay? And when I save this poly, it's gonna give me some information. Um, I gotta wait for the, the tiles to finish loading here. Um, I have some all, um, already made. And I'm going to go ahead and load that poly up. So I'm going to open one that I have already made here. Uh, this was for the St. Joe's area, since it's the data that I'm dealing with right now. And once you have these polylines created, um, I can go out here and go to my Google Maps for that area, or I can go to the national map. Now, the national map is uh, one of my favorite places to gather data from. Uh, for publicly available LiDAR. And you notice that when I set my polyline here in the Z tools, when I right click and click the link for the national map, it automatically takes me to the pertinent location for that uh, polygon in my national map viewer. Uh, from this area right here, I can go ahead and maybe find source data, find those products. Um, you can see I have several different sources for uh, downloading publicly available LiDAR data, all right? So I can go ahead and download those into the Z tools. And when I do that, then I can extract and uh, modify that data. So I've already downloaded those before. Um, I can also download D DEM data. So I can load up that same XML. Whenever I make those polygon shapes, I save them as an X, uh, XML tile, okay? Uh, and then uh, here's my folder tile outloads. Um, I can say go ahead and get files and it's going to go out to uh, the USGS and download. Um, um, oh, sorry, the, uh, the get tiles is for user tiles. I don't have a folder where I'm saving those, but if I had those tiles available in, in tile format um, in my hard drive, I can use this to get data using that shape. Um, the tile data is going to come from areas like uh, Pix4D lets you make Google tiles um, or other software. QGIS lets you tile data out and create your tile sets. Sort them on a location, set those up, and, and use that to gather local data. I can also um, extract data uh, from a polygon. So let's say I go to that St. Joe's uh, area. Um, I have another short area that's just a strip of road. OK, and then I can browse for my data. So here's my my tape, uh, the files that I've uh, downloaded here. OK, and I can get those files. So it's going to list all those LAZ files that I have stored on there. Um, I can choose to 
process all of these, use that little strip of a USGS so it's just a small portion of the road. If I go back to my Z Tools map, um, you can see if I load the uh, the road strip, um, it's just a small sort of uh, road here along Clayton Road. So if let's say I had data for this entire polygon area here and I just wanted to extract a new LIS file from that polygon, then I'd come here to my extract from polygon tools, browse for the data that I've downloaded and uh, open that XML, get those files. If I highlight all of these and I hit the process, it's gonna create a new LAS for me in a new output folder. Um, so I look at my output path, so it's gonna put this, it's gonna create a new folder called road strip coming from the name of that XML file and it's gonna create new LAS based upon that. So I can use it for processing those particular tools. Um, I can also download DEM files based upon those XML files that I've created here. Uh, this is similar to downloading the uh, LiDAR data, but instead of the LiDAR data direct, it's going to be um, uh, the DEM file. So it's gonna be the, uh, the, 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 the data sets from the Elevation Products 3DEP. These will be uh, um, um, arc tile sets now or, um, or geotiffs or whatever DEM data that I can get off of that, okay? Um, I can also colorize LIDAR. Now, most of the LIDAR data that you're gonna get off of places like the national map, uh, maybe state uh, or local GIS data sources, typically are going to be black and white. Um, so if I, if I look at my data here, I can colorize that data. And I have several different ways that I can colorize them. I can colorize them from geotiffs that I may have downloaded. Um, I've already done that here. I'm, I'm not doing a lot of the processing because the processing does take a lot of time, more than uh, what I would uh, normally take up for a webinar here. Uh, but let's say I have these tile downloads. I have my, my tiles um, downloaded already. Uh, get files, and you can see these are the uh, LAZ files, and I can say, okay, get these from the USGS NAIP server or any geotips that I have that are spatially uh, rectified, and then I can go ahead and process that. It'll take those uh, imagery uh, files, overlay it onto the, uh, the LAZ and colorize them. And I can show you some, uh, some examples of the non-colorized and the colorized here. Uh, so if I go to my in folder, um, here is like a typical USGS. I'm going to open this up in Cloud Compare. Um, Cloud Compare automatically gets installed when you um, install uh, Geosync Go. Cloud Compare is a, uh, an open source point cloud viewer. Okay, so here is a typical uh, USGS tile that has been downloaded. You can see... Uh, I'm looking at in an elevation mode or an intensity mode right now. Really not a lot of detail on there. Uh, but if I go into that RGB folder after the processing and open up that same file, let me go ahead and open that. Uh, post colorization here in Geosync Go uh, is going to overlay that. Uh, I colorize this with the USGS uh, NAIP server. Um, and that same point cloud then becomes colorized thusly. So this is that same point cloud you just saw previously. So it's a good tool for doing that right off the bat as well. All right. Um, I can also process DXF or shapefile data, um, convert one to the other. So those, those shapefiles and XMLs that I have up here, I can process those out. Um, I also have, and this is the, uh, this is the glory tool of uh, Geosync Go Z Tools is the standard publisher. Um, I do have Cloud Compare here, but I have some limited tools that I have available to, with me. Whereas with the Geosync Go publisher, um, I can publish my point clouds and view them in an, uh, a, a local viewer here. So I'm going to go ahead and show you a couple of them. Here is that USGS publisher. Um, I'm going to go ahead and view that. You can see you have a a publishing tool that opens up that gives you a nice, clear, very easy to use uh, um, point cloud viewer. I can orbit, okay? Um, let's go to another one here. 
uh, I will go to my uh, um, uh, GeoSlam. So I have a GeoSlam file. Let's see. Let me go to, actually to my uh, uh, my recap file. So I'm going to go ahead and view that. So this was a uh, uh, a drone flown uh, lidar uh, that was, uh, or sorry, not lidar, a drone flown photogrammetry program that was uh, processed with uh, uh, Autodesk Recap Photo. And uh, if I look in here, and I look at my publisher, um, I have gone ahead and added a uh, GeoSlam scan of the interior. If I turn off the uh, the recap photo, you can see the GeoSlam scan that's internal to this. So I can go ahead and use this publisher to combine several different sources into one viewing scene. Uh, if I wanted to, I can come back here because I have that USGS in the same project. Um, I can go to my my recap file, uh, go here and add, and I'll add that USGS data to it. Save it, and then review that publisher. And so now I have all three things together. So you can see these are all scans that are in the same project. So back in, in Geosynco at the top when I set up my projects, when I add all that scan data to it, it lets me do, you know, use it in different ways. So here is a recap scan, a GeoSlam uh, Revo scan, and a USGS colorized LiDAR. Everything that was done here has been processed in Geosync Go um, post-processing. I have several different tools here available to me as well. Um, I can take measurements on here, so I can measure angles. Let's say I wanted to measure the angle of, of this sidewalk here. Um, I can just come back and take some point cloud uh, snaps, gather some, some angular data on here. Um, I can set different elevation points. Um, I can take some linear measurements on here. Um, Oops, I forgot to do one thing here with this point cloud. One thing you got to watch out for these point cloud data here. Um, I'm going back to my, uh, make sure I'm in my projection, Missouri East, and go to the units and my displays and feed point cloud units on this one are also in feet. And I think that's what I've gotten here. Save. Let me go ahead and review that. Distance. Yeah, that's better. <laughs> uh, I had the units. Yeah, those are the elevations. So you can see I'm getting some data out here. I'm getting some point cloud data. Um, I can take some vertical measurements, um, gather areas. And then when these are all done, I go ahead and export these out to DXF if I want to as well. Uh, for each of these items here, um, one of my favorites here is the cross-section view. So if you're sharing this within the office, I can make a cross-section. I can expand down on my scenes, and you can see there's that profile, that section that I made. Um, I can show that 2D profile and very easily uh, take some measurements and, and get some profile data out here. Um, I can also export these out as a CSV as well and or as a separate LAS. So maybe this distance strip of point cloud data I wanted as an LAS file, um, I can increase that width maybe to 25 feet. All right, let me close this, change this to 25 feet. Oops, I gotta up, increase it up here. So you can see that point cloud getting louder and larger and larger. So let's take it up to 100 feet. 100 show 2D profile, and now I can export this out as a separate LAS if I wanted to of just that profile data. Now this viewer here is all internal to the program. Uh, I can't share this particular uh, uh, scene out to the public, so this is limited to within the server. However, one of the publishing tools that I have here is to be able to publish this view to a um, USB stick. So, um, if you're a company and you're processing data and you're delivering LAS files and you have Geosync Go, you can also publish this viewer to a, a USB stick as well. So if you hand this data to a customer um, and say, hey, there's a free viewer on here as well, they can go ahead and you can they can use that published USB uh, viewer uh, on that stick. Okay. Um, some other functions in here, there's some conversion tools for converting 
different formats, uh, mostly DEM imagery, LAZ to TIFF files. So if I need some background, say I don't have background imagery or ortho photos, but I have that colorized point cloud, I can I can export that LAS to a GeoTIFF file, um, which will give me a nice, you know, kind of, kind of a quick and easy blended GeoTIFF file. Uh, TIFF to PNG, so different file formats in, in transferring. Uh, there's some point cloud info tools. Um, so, you know, if you're browsing for a particular point cloud, um, okay, get files, and I can click on a file and get some information on them. So there's my, my point cloud count, my minimum, my maximum, uh, get some detailed information on those as well. Okay. Um, reproject, so I can reproject. Um, you know, I said some of my USGS data came into me in UTM, so I can say, hey, for these particular files here that I'm going to browse for, I could set my uh, my say these files are in UTM 15, and hey, I need these in Missouri State Plain East. Get those files from that folder, and then process them. It'll reproject. It'll create a brand new folder and it will copy those files into that folder as reprojected uh, point cloud data. Um, I could do some text processing, uh, process text to different types of formats, PNEZD comma from one to another, um, and then imagery to XYZ tiles. So I can create tiles from uh, and create my own server. So these are XYZ photo, ortho photo tiles that get created from PIX4D or QGIS or other formats that can actually tile the images out. All right. So that's basically the Geosync Z tools. This gets, uh, you know, one, one, you know, so many licenses, the operator gets a license to the file, and then uh, they, they sell them in packs of, you know, single license, multiple licenses. Um, so these, this is an individual tool that we can use for uh, organizing, colorizing, transforming, manipulating, and um, getting data out of point clouds, okay? The second program that I wanted to show you that's with Geosync Go is the Geosync Go Cloud Publisher, okay? So I'm gonna log into this, okay? This is an online tool, oops, helps if I put my right password in. I usually don't run this, uh, there we go, because it's gonna start hitting my processor here. So what the Geosync Cloud Publisher lets you do, so just like I had the local publisher here uh, in my standard publisher in Z Tools, the Cloud Publisher will allow you to um, publish these point clouds out to uh, the public for public consumption in a web browser. And just like the Z tools, now I don't have the Z tools manipulations, you know, I don't have the, the point cloud processing manipulation tools I have in Publisher. Uh, this is strictly for viewing, um, but I can set up different users. So I can have several different users um, in here uh, for every, you know, if I get uh, uh, the different packages uh, for Z tools, like a silver package uh, allows uh, five, uh, you know, five seats of this. I get a, I do get one seat of the Geosync Cloud Publisher with uh, with limited data to use. Uh, so I've set you know myself up as as different users, and I have different projects in here. And under those different projects, I have uh, different scenes and point clouds. Um, so I can upload different maps, point clouds. So I have uploaded all my point clouds in here already. Um, and then I can create scenes from them. So here's the St. Joe's Academy scene that I have published from uh, um, the Z tools. I've gone ahead and, and used the Z tools to gather my data, colorize it, um, organize it, and then I'll use the Point Cloud Publisher to publish it up to um, the Point Cloud, uh, to the, the internet for consumption. Okay, so these are hosted on web servers. Uh, they're hosted on the uh, Microsoft Azure servers at this time, uh, but you can use, uh, you know, set up your own servers as well um, using the Z tools to, to publish those as well. Okay, so this is that same scene. Um, I have the uh, um, the USGS. I have the building 
recap photo and I have the GeoSlam uh, uh, point clouds shared in here. Um, this is my tools for setting that up. So I can go ahead and, and add a scene. I can go ahead and browse for another point cloud uh, like an LAS or LAZ. Um, upload it in here and create that. So it, it's going to add that point cloud to my list of point clouds here. And then that scene, it's going to organize it in there. And just like uh, I did with the standard publisher, um, I can set up different aspects of this scene that I like. And once that's done, um, I can go ahead and load that up in a web browser. So here is just Firefox. And it's going to go to that scene. So this is that scene that has been published. And here we are in Firefox. That scene is loaded. And just like I have in the local Z tools, um, I have the ability to turn on and off the different point clouds that I want to view in here as well. So maybe I just want to focus on the GeoSlam data. Um, there it is available to me. Um, I can go ahead and manipulate it. Um, I have the same tools that I have in the local viewer that I have as well here. You know, I can do volume calculations. Um, I can cut cross sections just like I did in the other. Go back to my scene, look at my profile. You know, there's that same profile, but now this is publicly available on um, a, a standard web browser. And I can do the same thing. I can export LAS files. Uh, I can also add media in here. Maybe I want to show the street view for this site. So if I go back to my scene, maybe I'll turn on my recap and turn back on my, or actually I'll turn on my PIX4D and my USGS data. And I'll go ahead and say, okay, let's let's look at the street view on this. And I've already preloaded this with a, you know, you can choose this to share. And here's the street view. This is the uh, the, the hall that we've gotten uh, the data from, so I can now use this to maneuver around, go back to my scene and say, okay, yeah, that's that's that area there. Clear all these measurements, there we go. So yeah, I can see where I'm at now. Here's my point cloud data. Here's my my scene in, in Street View. Um, I also have an InfoWorks model I made up for this. Well, I wanna host and share that, so, Here's a link to my InfoWorks model viewer um, that I've also made. So you can use the Point Cloud Publisher not only to share this data uh, of the Point Cloud, but any other relevant media or file that you want to uh, host that's associated with this. Um, it also comes with a 360, uh, 360 photo viewer. So if you have photo spheres, um, they can be hosted in here as well as well as the local publisher will also have a, uh, a 3D um, image viewer. And that's, uh, that's basically the, 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 the program. Um, it is a, a, a brilliant way to share online or locally point cloud data um, in situations where we can organize it, we can gather data, we can catalog it, and then use it as we need to and, and do some basic manipulations. Um, if you want more information, you can go ahead and contact us. You can email us at cad at silarint.com. You can also email me directly at mchinesk at silarint.com or mchinesk at siler-ds.com. Uh, I'd like to remind you all, please, to uh, don't forget to follow our blog at www.siler-ds.com forward slash blog. And if you're interested in Geosync Go, um, you can contact us at these uh, emails or if you can contact your uh, sales representative um, and uh, we'll be happy to get back with you and, and discuss this in further. Um, training is also available on using all the tools here. It was just a cursory uh, overview of the of the program, uh, and that's all I have for my webinar. Does anybody have any questions? Okay, I don't see any questions. Uh, I want to thank everybody for taking some time out of their uh, busy Friday. It's a beautiful day outside, at least where I'm at. Um, I hope everybody has a great weekend, 
and thank you very much for attending. Have a great day and thanks for coming.